right, well, I guess we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to go ahead and post the agenda link in the chat. And uh, if everyone wouldn't mind going on and just marking yourself uh, as an attendee, that would be wonderful. It definitely helps us out, make sure that we know who's uh, attending and gives everyone an opportunity to kind of get involved. Um, yeah. Okay, do we have anyone new today in the meeting? If so, we'd love to have you introduce yourself and also if you wouldn't mind putting yourself down as a new member. All right, let me go ahead and share my screen. I forgot to do that. See if it'll let me share my screen. Okay. Can everyone see this or is it not sharing? No, it's not. All right, let me try again. Hmm. This looks like it's not letting me share my screen today for some reason. Um, would anyone mind? Um, actually, let me see real quick. No one is not letting me share today. I apologize. Um, is anyone willing to just kind of share the meeting notes as we go through them today? I can try and give it a try from here if you want. Yeah, that would be great. I normally don't have any issues, but I guess with the latest version of Zoom, it doesn't recognize any of my inputs. So, Is that working okay? Yeah, I can see it okay. Thank you for, for doing that for us. Um, let me grab these over on this other page, though, so follow along over here. All right. Okay, well, again, thank you everyone for coming to our meeting today. Um, looks like we got some people filling out the agenda notes already. That's wonderful. Um, and then if there's anything that people would like to discuss that um, you know isn't on the uh, on the agenda or notes, uh, feel free to go ahead and put that in the open floor section of the agenda. And uh, we'll definitely make sure that we get to that as well. Um, looks like someone posted about KubeCon notes. Uh, Whoever posts that, do you want to just kind of give a brief highlight about that? If not, I'm happy to. Okay, well, I guess I'll just go ahead and uh, give a, a little review then. So it looks like from KubeCon, there were 50 plus people who attended the KubeVert project meeting, uh, which is awesome. Looks like it overwhelms the room. Uh, it's uh, fantastic to see lots of people were able to attend that. Um, that you know we were able to actually meet people in in, uh, in person. I uh, unfortunately was not able to attend this year, uh, but maybe in in future years. Um, there was a I guess a near constant traffic on the Kubernetes kiosk, which is wonderful, um, and a, a drastic improvement from the previous KubeCon. Again, that's fantastic, and so. Um, it's great to, to see that it's gaining popularity and some traction. Um, looks like the end user session went really well also. And uh, huge thanks to everyone who was able to moderate and, uh, and to present in that. Um, and then we had a session with another huge audience. Um, so great job for that. And also thanks for the people who uh, did the OpenShift contributions and, and whatnot there. Um, and then DevConf CZ. Um, looks like we're gonna have a booth there, and if you are gonna be presenting or uh, you know showing up and attending, uh, please make sure you let uh, a burden know. Um, he will be joining the meeting a little bit later, but also you can reach out to him on Slack, um, so we can promote the sessions and also coordinate with the people um, who will be uh, over the meeting. Um, 
But yeah, that looks like those are kind of the, the keynotes there. Um, anything else that people would like to bring up on the agenda? All right, making my job easier. I appreciate it. Okay, um, so just kind of going down. It looks like we've got some stuff in the um, in the pull request section that I I went through and did my best to kind of curate the list here. I tried to make sure if there were those that did did or did not have traction that I was able to get through those. Um, there's just kind of two of them that stood out to me on that. Um, I feel like there was a third one, but maybe I missed that. Let me see, nine five five. Four, eight. It's five five was a PR. That's why that goes in. No, because they are PRs. Okay. So looks like I missed putting in nine fifty five. Let me update that list real quick so you can get those pulled up as well. Um. All right. Um. So yeah, the looks like we've got. Uh, nine five or nine six five nine, which has to do with an updated orphaned virtual machine instant alert. Um, when scraping multiple instances of the cube state metrics, there will be several series with different labels for instances. Using sum adds together the results for these cube state metrics. By using max instead, the maximum value seen for the metrics is used, which is equivalent to scraping a single uh, state with sum. And so this looks like it goes through to address that. Um, I didn't, it seems fairly new. Um, and so I'm not sure if there's anyone who might be willing to give a review on this. I unfortunately do not have the reviewer status. Um, so I am not able to do that review myself, but I'm happy to assign somebody if they um, are able to do that. To log into GitHub, just a second. Um, just to note, I believe anyone can review even without reviewer status. Uh, the reviewer status just assigns PRs to you automatically. Correct. Um, I, I apologize, I kind of do stuff in the a couple of different communities, so I know it's different between them. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely happy to do a review. I don't know that I'm super uh, familiar with what's going on here, other than it looks like they're changing some wording in the uh, in the functionality. Um, and the way that they're calling it, so. That's interesting. Um, yeah, I'm happy to all review that. Um, seems to be an unusual part of the code. Maybe we should look at history on it and see uh, who initially wrote it because I have no idea what this is. Yeah, I, I'm not very familiar with it either. So that's why I was hoping someone might uh, <laughs> might be able to, to call out on that, but that's fine. I'll. Uh, uh, add myself as a uh, reviewer on that, and then um, be happy to to do that. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll add a review on there. Um, but it, yeah, I'll do some research on it as well. But it would be good probably to to dig into that and figure out what exactly is going on there and figure out why they decided to go with what they did. Um, all right, we'll move on then to um, to the next one, which is the establish SME for vert, vert controller component. And so this is going to split the vert controller package in order to be able to assign specific areas for SME. Um, again, I'm not very familiar with this particular piece, but if uh, there is, it's also mentioned in another PR from two days ago, it looks like it's a pretty significant change, so. Uh, digs into a lot of different pieces. Yeah, I think there's ongoing work to kind of reorganize the, the SIGs. So I think that work is just ongoing and reviews will will happen in time. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, where I, I'm not, again, I'm a little bit less familiar with the PR process here. I hadn't contributed as much as I might like. 
Um, is there a whip status that might be beneficial to put on this to prevent it from being um, said as like need to be reviewed or what is the best practice for that? In general, you would normally add a, um, uh, put it into draft status if you wouldn't want to have it reviewed somehow. So I guess that at least uh, if this hasn't the sign, then it should be, but should be ready for review. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I I can check with Lubo on that just to see if if he wants to move that back into a draft or. Okay. Sounds good. Um, do you want me to CC you on this then, Brian? Uh, it should be okay. I I have the link here already, so I'm on. Okay. I'm on it. Sounds good. Perfect. And then I added one last one, which was the SE Linux uh, policy. Ensure it never gets installed if the feature gate is set. Um, and this one is from yesterday. So again, it's still fairly new, um, but I didn't see a lot of communication on it. Um, so I figured I would bring it up for discussion if anyone's familiar with uh, this particular. It's a manual backport, I guess, of a previous PR. Um, and it just goes through and it changes out um, to make sure that SE Linux isn't enabled if something is set. So, yeah, it's it's for me, and it goes with an issue that's listed as well in the document. Um, basically, in Ver Handler, we declare the callbacks before refre refreshing the cache. So um, the first time the callbacks are called, they are called with pretty much empty objects, uh, and and. In this case, um, we we don't see any of the feature gates, so we installed the S Linux policy even if there was a feature gate requesting spe specifically not to install it. Gotcha. Pretty pretty important functionality. <laughs> so appreciate the work there. Um, yeah, it actually doesn't uh, impact uh, anything else than just installing something on the system that will never get used. <laughs> yeah, which I mean could be detrimental depending on the policy i right. guess that's said so <laughs> but uh again that's that's really great um it looks like there were some previous people who've done the review on this would you like me to see see them on that again for this particular pr that would make sense okay i will do that oh whoops i didn't actually put the ad though Okay, that is done already. I think that wraps up the PRs unless another one's been added. No, okay. All right, uh, a couple of things I thought were interesting from the mailing list, just figured I'd point out um, as a as a review. Um, one of them being that GoExec um, is going to be deprecated. So just again, be aware of that. Um, and you're welcome to go through and just kind of read through the uh, information to figure out why they're you know, going to be doing that. And so, um, but just again, just something to be aware of, uh, kind of an important piece of, of news to, if you've used it in the past, to just know that it's going away. I um, believe there's a typo there. It's, it must be go expect. Yeah, um, I think so as well. But <laughs> um, anyway, go expect um, will be going away. Thank you for, for that uh, that catch. But uh, it looks like it is um, going away. So if you do use Go Expect, just be aware of that. Um, and then the last thing, um, just that the user guide is being reorganized. And so that's the, the last thing from the mailing list. If you aren't already aware of it, um, there's some some great reworking um, that's being done on the user guide right now. Um, so there's a link there if you want to look and, and see what's going on there. Um, but again, always always nice to see user guides updated. Uh, cleaned up and 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 reorganized. So, all right. Um, and then the last thing, there were uh, four issues that were from this this past week that didn't have any movement on them. Uh, but it looks like there are a couple more that was added by Andrew as well. So I guess we'll just kind of get started and go through those. Hmm. 
Okay, avert handle callback. Um, be declared too early. That's the one I was talking about. Gotcha. So this is in, in reference to the... To yeah, so my, my PR took care of the SLNX policy one, but uh, I was wondering about the other ones. Gotcha. Which I'm assuming they probably also should be checked and, and modified as well. So that's a, a good thing to keep track of on that. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure if there's any, I so suppose this is from five days ago. I think this is, you know, I, I'm assuming that this shouldn't be a huge lift. So this might be something that uh, newcomers might be able to pick up and, and roll with a little bit. Um, any thoughts on that as you uh, have opened that? Um, yeah, yeah. Just looking at the callback code, and and uh, I guess if any, if no other callback depends on a specific state, then it, maybe it doesn't matter. Gotcha. Um, where you've got so you mentioned the SC Linux policy, um, is where that's one that you've already um, done. Is that as relevant here? Or, I guess it's kind of hard to select it without it. <laughs> right. You need eighteen, so that makes sense. Um, awesome. Okay, um, I think that sounds like this is a pretty well established one. Um, so um, I think people are good on that. Um, is there is there anyone? I mean, is this something that you're going to look at working on, or are you hoping someone else will pick this up? Um, I, I might get to it eventually, but I wasn't planning <laughs> on looking at it right now. Okay, gotcha. Uh, maybe I'll just put a, a thing in here, a comment, just to make sure that it you know doesn't go stale, so people are aware of it. Um, Thanks. Yep. A little comment on there. All right. Um, no kind virtual machine. It's the next one that we've got on that list. So it looks like this person is going to set up an Ubuntu 22.04 VM and install KVM and other necessary things on it. Download Docker to this VM. Next, follow the documentation install kubevert 0 0.59 and into minikube and try running test vm which didn't start so there's error no kind virtual machine is registered for version kubevert iov1 in scheme package scheme go obviously should have started uh, but it didn't and how to reproduce it um, just install so i'm a little bit less familiar with this um, does anyone have any initial thoughts when, when seeing the, the contents of this? He might be missing nested virtualization. Um... Uh, he says he's running it in a Ubuntu VM. It's all KVM. Um, so, uh, does the VM have nested virtualization enabled? Um, that may, may be wrong, but I don't have an alert reporting it. Uh, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, I'm, if I'm not wrong, recently we introduced an alert that should explicitly uh, make the, the user aware that one of the hosts support uh, virtualization. Gotcha. 
So does that mean that it's not something that has to be manual enabled anymore or? Mm. No, nested virtualization should be eventually enabled, but uh, in that case, uh, the the user is supposed to get an explicit like an explicitly added. So uh, he he would uh, not open this. Gotcha. Okay. Well, we'll see if they come back with that and maybe we can investigate a little bit further with some more info. Um, okay. And then let's see here. So 9645. So an API, I guess V1 sub resource cube for IO not found. So um, we went through this and let's see here. Deleting cubevert not working. And delete success. Contacts with the issue here. Um, Please zero seventeen zero. Be true. So they're having a they're failing to delete cubevert. Not sure why they're doing it three times, but they seem to be. Um. I'm not sure why this would be doing that. I mean, other than the weird syntax that they're using, but. Error from server not found. Seems like their Kubernetes seems in a weird state to begin with. Um, I think it might be helpful if we have a little bit more information about what they're running. See if we can get some more information on that one. Um, All righty. And then last but not least, we have a failed plugging phase one. Link not found. So they cannot start VMs with the second NIC. Network attachment information. Bridge. Okay, and then Bert Launcher, they've got some logs here posted in the comments. Unable to open dev KVM permission denied. Right, connect to socket. Now, I don't know a lot about this, but it seems like their uh, system might have some stuff not prepared correctly. But let's see if they've got the network. Looking at Nick one link not found. Is 
Is there anyone familiar more with the uh, network side of how this works? I'm unfortunately uh, in the uh, security side of things, so <laughs> a little bit less familiar with this as well, unfortunately. Yeah, I don't, I don't see any uh, network people in the meeting. Gotcha. Do you know of anyone we might be able to CC on this air on this issue? Um, maybe uh, Ed. Um, I forgot his name. His school. I don't remember his school angle. Um, um is it uh, Ed Dev? Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. I will do that. And hopefully he can um, provide a little uh, support for this individual. Thanks. Yeah. All righty. Um, well, that's great. Has, let me look at this real quick. Has there been anything added to the open floor? Don't think so. At least I don't see anything. Is there anything else that, uh, well, we got a couple more, I guess, here. Sorry. Um, pass through GPU. The there we go. Okay, pass through mode and never place GPU card with a VFIO PCI and enable GPU and whitelisted for that. Can't start. Vladik is probably the best one to look at that. Okay. Yeah. Come on that. I guess you can. Yeah, you gotta let Vladik take a look at it then. Okay, then it looks like the next one is Cubevert VM not starting on a V cluster. It's so a 9618. All right, I can successfully deploy a VM in a Minikube cluster, but failed in V cluster. Um, I'll clear, I expect the VM demo to start and run the V cluster. Okay, so we've got some version information here. One to twenty oh four on Hyper V. Um, I'm not quite sure how Hyper-V works, but it looks like it's trying to connect to a, a Linux socket endpoint. Which, obviously, it's not going to work, so... It's empty cube for film with this container. Um, any ideas on this? Again, I don't do much with Hyper-V. I've primarily been only in the Linux space, so I'm not sure how the Hyper-V stuff works. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do we expect this to work with Hyper-V? I don't know. <laughs> My initial thought is no, but I'm not sure. Uh, again, it, I guess it kind of depends on where they're deploying, so... Um, like if it's in Azure and they potentially have the stuff for this, then maybe, but, uh, seems kind of interesting. Um, 
Well, it seems like it's failing because it's trying to connect to KVM, but it's obviously not using KVM as a hypervisor. So I'm wondering about that. Um, so this may be related to the, a previous issue. Is there any information on this issue? The cluster. That one's running on Linux, not on Hyper-V. Um, I am not sure if this is meant to work on Hyper-V. That's a good question. It's something that someone, I could look into that. I can ask someone from the Microsoft team if they've got an idea, but... Uh, Unless anyone knows someone in particular. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe we can just ping Lubo on that issue because he's on the previous issue as well. So maybe he has some background information on it. Okay. Um, Appreciate that. Thank you for doing that for me. Okay. And the very last one looks like it is the Bert Handel looking for wrong Multis interface name. They say that there's a change that broke it between 0 0.58.1 and 0 0.59. Interface named after the name of the network attachment definition. And the workaround is to use net1 as the name of the attachment resource. Um, this seems relatively similar to that one with net one that they ran into in that previous error. And did we already do this thing? And maybe should I ping add dev on this one as well? Um, I might try Miguel on that one. Miguel. Um, I think he does stuff with Multis. Gotcha. All right. I'm ping him on that as well.
Alrighty. Um, it looks like that's the last of the uh, bugs. So thank you everyone for your input and help and supporting me in that. I appreciate it. Um, is there anything else that anyone would like to bring up before we, we wrap up today? Going once, going twice. Uh, hi. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, hi, this is Bihari. So I'm working on uh... Uh, we host user uh, support for KubeWord VM, and I'm working on a design proposal. And while looking for the changes required, I found to know, uh, I got to know that I need to make some changes on uh, KubeWord CI as well. Uh, the CI repo, KubeWord CI repo. Okay. So I'm a... Uh, uh, so I, I just want to try, to, uh, I'm trying to understand whether if uh, OBS with DPDK is already enabled there or do we need to uh, configure it separately? So uh, I'm uh, uh, trying to get that information. So I thought maybe in this call, uh, if I can, I, I, could, I would get a chance to discuss about that. That is a good question. I actually don't know that I have the answer to that. Um, does anyone happen to know the answer to that? Sorry, Vihari, what, what, which package were you looking for config? configuration on? Uh, so uh, I know the OVS is already being deployed in the Kubert CI repo, but uh, I'm trying to understand if uh, DBDK is already, uh, if it is configured with uh, DBDK or uh, do we need to make any code changes to make it configured with DBDK? Because in the setup, when I bring up, I can see there is a DBDK uh, available, but there are no binaries available. So uh, the, I'm trying to understand how the code is doing that. Uh, and also, I'm, on, I'm trying to understand if uh, we, if we can make changes to the code to make OBS configured with DPDK. Uh, I'm I'm not really sure. I'd have to take a look. Um, have you have you have you reached out on the Kubert Dev Slack channel? Uh, yeah, I, I reached out to a few people and then uh, they mentioned to create a, a design proposal. Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, so I'll probably uh, submit it by this week. So, uh, it, uh, so I'll get the, con I mean, so that uh, most of you will be able to have the context on it uh, by next uh, sync up call. I'm planning on it. Okay, so it, it sounds like it wouldn't exist in QVC already if it's, if it's at a design proposal stage. Uh, yeah, but, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the DPDK support is not there. Uh, that's what I, 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 I'm sure about, but, uh, I'm just trying to understand, uh, is there any way that I, I can configure, uh, DPDK? I'm looking for that. And while working on that, I found, uh, the setup that is, uh, brought up by the Cuba CI. It is having some DPDK, uh, module installed, but there are no available, uh, available libraries. So I was a bit com uh, confused on that point. Yeah. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll, uh, because anyway, I'll be having the uh, design proposal submitted by this week. So I hope uh, next week we'll, we can discuss on that. Thanks. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. No problem. Thanks for, uh, for asking. Sorry, I didn't have the answer for you. Um, all right, uh, going once. Going twice, three times. All right. Uh, well, thank you all again for, for attending today and for your help and uh, sticking with me. I believe that catch me back um, next week. So I uh, look forward to that and uh, seeing you all then as well. All right. See you later. Yeah, thank you. Bye.